Thank you. Uh, so this is kind of based on, I wrote these up last night based on the talk. Luke's great talk yesterday about zippers and also it touches a little bit on protocols um, and it's something that we're doing at Revlytics um, to do tree mutation with zippers, so I thought it was interesting. Um, first, I want to talk a little bit about doing zippers over records, uh, tree of records. Um, so I'm going to start actually with this, which doesn't have anything to do with, ripper, with uh, records, but might be useful. Um, so I've actually created a protocol. Uh, so the zipper function, which you'll see down at the bottom, takes three um, functions that you need to define on a root. And uh, I've actually used a protocol to define what those are um, so that we can sort of swap in uh, an implementation for each of our record types. Um, so we have branch, is this thing possible to have children, no children, and uh, make node makes a new, child, a new node when you're sitting at a particular point in the, uh, in the uh, uh, zipper over a location. Uh, and then I've also extended it with a default, um, a default one. And so here I'm gonna create some records and these records are really, uh, so I'm kind of doing some arithmetic type stuff. So a scalar function, something like plus or minus or concat or whatever. It's some function, it has some expressions that go with it. Um, I've got a comparison, which is something like left equals right or left greater than right. Um, this is just an example, so I can build up a little tree out of these. I'm then going to extend the protocol that I created in the last slide, tree node, into, um, uh, into the two types, scalar function and comparison. So I'm just implementing those things. And there's kind of a, a difference in style here between these two. The first one is taking actually a seek of records so the children are contained in a seek of records in the record. Um, the other one is that I have a set of fields, each of which is a single record. Uh, if we want to add um, support for records in the zipper library directly, I think the crux of the only interesting questions that need to be answered are around um, how we make this work generically. Uh, and I, I'm not sure what the answer is, so I think that'd be a great thing for all of you to think about. Um, but you'll see the difference in what that means in the implementation down there. So here I've got actually three different representations of a tree. Um, the code is there, F1 and F2 are functions that say two plus three and six minus one, and a comparison that says those two things equal to each other, which is sort of the string representation and a tree representation over on the right. Um, so that's my tree of records, and I'm then going to use treezip, which is the, um, the zipper implementation that uses the protocol. I'm just gonna wrap that around the, um, around the root node, and that, so tree Z is then a zipper on this tree of records. Uh, and then I can, I can use all of the zipper functions here, though I've uh, aliased the namespace into Z. Um, so I can go um, down, down, right, and I get to, and then return the node at that location, it will return three. Um, so moving beyond that, um, something that we found really useful is that what we need to do a lot is take these trees of, of heterogeneous records I want to search for patterns inside that tree uh, and then mutate the tree in, in some way that um, changes it to a new tree. And I want to do this over and over again. So we wrote this function um, that's going to take a zipper, a matcher function, and an editor function. And it's going to, um, I'm doing a loop recur here. It's basically on top of uh, zipper next until it hits the end. So I'm just skimming through in depth first order through all the locations in the tree. At every location, I'm going to apply the matcher function. Uh, I'm gonna get the matcher result, and uh, what we found is that oftentimes the matcher is building up state that I don't wanna redo that work in the editor, so we actually return the result of the matcher function uh, into the editor if it matches. So that was a nice performance improvement. Um, so the edit function is then modifying the node, so if we matched, then at that point in the zipper node, um, if we've matched, we apply the, the zipper edit function with our editor function, um, and if, the, if there was a change, uh, then we bail out, and otherwise we keep recurring. Um, so this will apply exactly one tree mutation, and there's more stuff that we wrap around this um, to sort of apply multiple rules. But as an example, here I've got a rule that says um, the match function is, is it a scalar function, and if it is, um, the editor function takes the result of match, which in this case I don't care about, that's the underscore, and then it takes the node under th that I'm at, and it will then apply that, um, either plus or minus, or it'll say, oh no, if it finds something it doesn't understand. And then, uh, so we will apply that, and we'll get the second one. Oh, that was it. So 
you'll get uh, you'll be able to apply to two plus three and get five. So you can apply it multiple times. That's it.